are you ready to get freaked on? My name is Bloody Jack and you're watching the fucking news. <laughs> your path to be We're all here just for all the fun Now you're jamming Jamming hard, yeah Hype it up all once again Turn it, hype it up Now you're jamming Jamming hard, yeah Hype it up all once again Turn it, hype it up Well, my beautiful people, it's actually great to see you guys again <clears throat> new segment on the channel is actually a new segment now for you of those who are wondering where is Jojo part 4 review and where is the Dragon Ball evolution review they are coming so hold your bloody horses on that <clears throat> so I thought that I would tackle a certain segment where I talk about upcoming things that have been announced for our kind of dev and graphic. So without further ado, let's get <clears throat> excuse me, right into it. So the first section we're going to talk about the new games that have been announced recently that I'm personally looking forward to and what my personal first impressions are of them at the moment. But first, a nice little tea break. First game we're going to talk about, Oddworld Soulstorm. This was announced about two months ago on the PlayStation 5 reveal. We've already got two trailers, one trailer that came out over two years ago, and a new trailer that, come, that came out with the PlayStation reveal. This game is supposed to take place after Oddworld Abe's Odyssey, not Abe's Odyssey, Abe's Exodus on the PS1, assuming that you got the good ending of the game. Are uh, you playing as Abe, again. Um, but you have to go back to Rapture Farms Well, not Rapture, Rupture Farms To finish off what you started back in Abe's Odyssey uh, What my hopes are for the game I honestly have very, very high hopes for the game, actually But the game ain't coming out until... I can't remember the release date But I will put a thing somewhere on screen when I actually talk about the world, uh, it's been Abe's coming back again though at full force. This will be a 2D, well, 2.5D side-scrolling platforming puzzle game. So something that I will be very much into. And also you've got um, Lord Lanning coming back, the creator of Oddworld, and also the voice of Abe. For a little clarification for you who don't know. Next, we have. Crash Bandicoot 4, it's about time, it's coming out this October. I am personally not excited for this. I mean, yeah, I kind, I do love Crash Bandicoot, because as I said in my top 100 favorite video games of all time videos, when I actually mentioned Crash Bandicoot, it's one of my favorite games ever, and it was the first video game I ever played. I'm all for new things for the series, but when they announced that they're remastering Crash 4, I immediately jumped to the conclusion that they're remaking Wrath of Cortex, which, you know, as it is the real Crash 4, which came out on the PS2, and then got continued with Crash Bandicoot Twin Sanity on the PS2 and original Xbox. I honestly don't know where to put my foot on this. I mean, yeah, the gameplay trailer looks okay. I would play the demo, but you can't, because it's only on PS4, from what I know through various research online. 
So yeah, if you have a PS4 and you're playing the Crash Bandicoot 4 demo, tell me what you think, because I honestly don't know, because it's not available on Xbox or PC or Switch at the moment. But the game is coming out on PS4, Xbox, PC and Switch. Uh, the plot of the game is basically, it's taking place after Crash Bandicoot warped and crashes again, trying to stop Evil Cortex from taking over the world. I mean, I can't really put my foot on anything in the game. It, the plot of it, with the different masks that are introduced in the game, is very reminiscent of Crash 4, or, well, of Wrath of Cortex. With the masks and each mask being a different ability, except Crash can now use them. I guess I'll probably wait till the game comes out, I'll probably make a gameplay series of it or something. Or I'll give a review of it on what my personal opinion is when I actually do get the game myself. <clears throat> Next game, Resident Evil 8. Coming out in February, the, well not this year, next year. Which is actually not called Resident Evil 8, it's being called Resident Evil Village. Yeah, Resident Evil v Village, or The Village, or Biohazard The Village if you're living in Japan. Um, yeah, this is going to take place straight after. Uh, yeah, it's going to take place straight after Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. And as someone who's somewhat of a veteran of the mainline games of the Resident Evil series, um, with the only game of the series I haven't actually played is Nemesis. <laughs> I haven't played either the PS3 version or the remake yet. But yeah, I am a Resi fan, and I am pretty damn excited about Resident Evil. I mean, the trailer looks amazing. You're playing as Ethan from 7 again. I don't know where this trailer's going to lead up to. Capcom have been very secretive about this. So, all I can say is... Let's just keep our hopes up for all the Resi fans out there. If you want to, I recommend you guys check the trailer out yourselves. And give, tell me what you think. Next, Spider-Man Miles Morales which is coming out on the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 5 next year. As any of you are Marvel fans here on this channel, um, and with me myself being a Marvel Comics fan, um, <clears throat> yeah, Miles Morales, most people will know him now from the Into the Spider-Verse movie, but I've read a couple Miles Morales comics. I don't know the entire story of the character that well, but I do have respect for the character because I did watch Into the Spider-Verse and I thought it was alright. For those of you who don't know, Sp Miles Morales is not the main canon Spider-Man. He's from Universe... God, I forgot where it was actually. I looked it up on my phone earlier. 1610. Yeah, he's from Earth 1610. Um, if you've watched Into the Spider-Verse, that's basically, well, the first, like, I want to say 20 minutes. I like his origin story and that's about it. Um, I don't own a PS5 or a PS4, so I'll wait until the reviews come out and probably watch some gameplay videos and give my opinion on them. Or when it turns around and I actually somehow do get a PS5. Next, now this is a rumour that... Next game is technically two games, but this has been a little bit of a rumour that's been speculating the internet for the past couple days. Or the past week, as you may know. Um... <clears throat> The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time may or may not be remastered and put onto the Switch, along with Mario 64 also being put onto the Switch. Now this has only been a rumour, uh, I've been seeing it all over Twitter and Facebook, a little bit on Instagram as well. I don't know if this is going to be true or not. Um, honestly I can't really put an opinion on that. I do own a Switch myself, but... If I'm totally honest, I really don't think we should remake Ocarina of Time. I know I'm going to get a lot of hate on the internet for this, but it's not that I hate Ocarina of Time. Far from it. I actually do like it. But I just don't think we should remake it so much. I feel like, in my personal opinion, what Legend of Zelda game we should get on the Switch? We should actually get Wind Waker on the Switch. Uh, Mario 64? 
Yeah, I guess I can see actually having it put on the Switch. I mean, there's not really that much wrong with the game. The game's absolutely fine. I haven't played the game in a long time. Last time I played Mario 64 was on the DS import. But yeah, I got no input on the Ocarina of Time and Mario 64 Switch imports. Uh, the next, I don't know if it's a rumour for say, but I am pretty excited when I found the links of this on loads of game chats, or, well not game chats, game pages on Facebook and Twitter, that Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, the video game, might make a possible comeback thanks to having it being leaked by the, car uh, the comics creator, Brian Lee O'Malley. Now, as you guys may have remembered again from my top 100 favorite video games of all time, I am a huge Scott Pilgrim fan. I have all the comics, I have the soundtrack on um, CD and vinyl. I even actually bought the video game. This game actually was put onto the Xbox 360 back in 2010 releasing the same time as the movie did, but um, after about a year or so later it got taken off of Xbox stores, but luckily I bought the game when it came out. So yeah, my Xbox 360 is hugely increased in value. <laughs> um, would I be very excited for this? Yes, I am very, 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 very excited for a... I would be very excited for a re-release of Scott Pilgrim The Game because A, it's one of the best games I've ever played, uh, it's one of my favourite book series, one of my favourite movies of all time. I, I just... Mm, there's so much to actually say about Scott Pilgrim that I think it should be a whole video on its own, where I can just talk about Scott Pilgrim. Uh, if you guys seen the movie, you know what would be coming if the game came out. Next segment... Uh, we're going to talk about TV shows that have been announced that have uh, triggered my personal opinions. Uh, firstly, uh, the Fallout TV series that has been announced for Amazon Prime. Uh, yeah, it will be released on Amazon Prime Video only, uh, from what I can gather. We have got a teaser trailer and a poster for it. Uh, to be completely honest, I'm not the biggest fan of the Fallout series, although, yes, if anyone's actually watched my videos, for the all, I don't know, three of you that actually watch my videos, I have a, um, a small little statue of the power armor for, for, uh, from Fallout for three. But yeah, all I can say is I'm not the biggest fan of the Fallout series, but I will give the show a chance, because I couldn't get into the games that much. But maybe the show can actually help me get into the games a little more. Uh, sh next, Stranger Things 4, which is coming out this September, this year. Uh, there's a, obviously a poster for this one, definitely, which I think we got a new poster released for it recently. Uh, there was a trailer, a teaser trailer, released back in March. Well, between February and March-ish. I'm not going to say anything, uh, spoiler-wise. Well, pretty much speaking about the trailer is just a spoiler, really. <laughs> just go check it out. I'll, I'll put a link in the description down below for Stranger Things 4 to check it out for yourselves. Uh, the next TV show I want to mention... Uh, it's been announced, slash kind of confirmed that Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Part 6 Stone Ocean will have a release date. Well, not release date, it will be adapted into anime. Um, there has been no release date said yet, but I am actually hoping that it will probably get a release next year. Um, and as you can tell from my Jojo videos, I am a huge fan of the anime series. Speaking of more anime, my Hero Academia Season 5 has been announced and confirmed for a 2021 release date. Um, I'm currently watching My Hero Academia right now. I'm not going to review it because... Eh, I just don't feel like I have the effort to put and make a review of a show so big as My Hero Academia. I'm currently in the middle of watching Season 2 at the moment online. Uh, but yeah, I am enjoying it so far. Next, we have another anime series to mention, Attack on Titan, the final season. Um, I've only watched season one, and I have season one on DVD. 
Um, I'm working my way at the moment around to watching season 2 and 3. I know I'm a little late to the party, but I've watched the actual first season. I've been watching more anime. I've watched the live action movies. And <clears throat> I even played the Xbox One game, Attack on Titan Wings of Freedom, for any of those who've actually bought it. And it's actually alright. Uh, am I excited for Attack on Titan Season 4? Yeah, I'll give it a watch, once I actually do get around to watching it. Another show is a live action show, not an anime show this time. Uh, Chucky. I believe it's called Chucky or Child's Play the Series because it keeps getting its name changed. A continuation of the original Chucky movies from being growing since 1988. And it's picking up right from where Cult of Chucky left off and it's being premiered on the Sci-Fi Channel next summer. Uh, all we know is we've got the original writer, Don Mancini, coming back, to writing and directing a few ep like all ten episodes, and we've got Brad Dorf coming back to play Chucky. Uh, that's all I know about the series. There is a teaser trailer that is really, really good. Well, two teaser trailers, actually. Um, I would recommend you guys check them out. I'll have them on the screen, obviously, but I re recommend you guys definitely check that shit out. And the final show I'm going to talk about is... Regrets Go Season 3, which is coming out on Netflix in two weeks on the 27th of August. I am fully excited for Regrets Go. I, since I had Netflix for the past couple years, I have watched Regrets Go all the way through. I watched all of Season 1, loved it. Watched the Christmas special, loved it. Watched Season 2, astonished. I've seen the Season 3 trailer yesterday, and I've got to say, I'm very excited. And I think Regrets Go has actually been one of my top favourite animes to ever hit Netflix of recent dates. Now that's enough about TV shows, let's now talk about movies. And the first movie on my agenda is Marvel's Morbius. Now, again, as a fan of the Marvel comics, uh, you, can, you can't expect too much for me to actually speak about certain Marvel properties, but Morbius... Uh, is the well is known as Morbius the Living Vampire first appearing in the Spider-Man in the early Amazing Spider-Man comics well around the I want to say in the 70s era of Spider-Man like between the 70s and early 80s version of Spider-Man um yeah Morbius is being played by Jared Leto who we all know screwed up playing the Joker in Suicide Squad I'm not a fan of the movie <clears throat> Am I excited to watch Morbius? If they play the character right, yes. Uh, do I like anti-heroes a little too much? Yes. Um, it's not coming. It was supposed to come out last month, but you know, due to the current situation that the world is in right now, it's been pushed to a March release, unfortunately. Uh, next. We have Venom 2, which I don't know if the release date has been moved for that either. I don't know if it's still coming out in October or not, but anyone that can give me any insight on that? I mean, my research on this has been literally just now. Because I really just want to talk about Venom 2, the addition of Carnage being added into the mix. I did like Venom. Although it wasn't exactly Venom from the comics, as most people have been complaining, like myself. <sighs> Enough of the rant. There's no trailer yet. I don't know if we do have a poster or not. If so, obviously it'll be put somewhere on the screen. And um, next we have the new Candyman movie being made. Now, as a horror fan as well, well, a fan of classic horror movies. I will actually watch this. This is getting the whole Halloween treatment. It's going to skip, like, make all of the sequels non canon to the series. So, this will only be a sequel to the 1992 original Candyman with bringing Tony Todd back playing Candyman. And also, I think it's being written and directed by the same guy that did Get Out, I think. Now, I think it's the same guy that made Get Out and um, Us. Uh, two movies I have watched but don't remember that well. <laughs> um, next, another horror movie I want to talk about is Halloween Kills. This Everyone knows this has actually been pushed 
Well, the release date for it has been pushed to next year due to, again, the world being screwed over by the virus. By the T-Virus. Um, yeah, Halloween Kills is going to be a sequel from the 2018 Halloween movie, which I really, really loved. Uh, and it's also going to be part one of a finale. So it's going to be a two-parter to the ending. There's already a trailer, which is actually really, really good. It's not a full-blown trailer, though. It is a... It's more of a teaser, or a sneak peek of the movie, than a actual full-blown trailer. Uh, all the same people that did the last one are coming back, so this looks pretty promising for me. Next, The Chronicles of Riddick Furia. Oh, Furia, sorry. Um, it's been a long ass time, it's been about seven years since we've had a Riddick movie. Uh, this will be another installment of, well Vin Diesel recently announced this back in May, that the script for the new Riddick film has been finished, now it's just a case of actually making the movie now, from what Vin Diesel has said on Instagram. Um, I'm a huge fan of the Riddick series, I've got nearly everything of the Riddick um, franchise, I've nearly, I'm trying to get the comic books at the moment, but I've got um, the video games, I've got um, Escape from Butcher Bay, Assault on Dark Athena, uh, the Pitch Black DVD, the other DVD of um, the Chronicles of Riddick. I don't have Dark Fury yet. I don't have the DVD of that, but I have seen it before. And I got the director's cut of Riddick on Blu-ray. Um, do I like the Riddick series? Yes. Um, the only thing that has really been said about it is that it's... People want to debate... Well, it's being debated whether or not because the script hasn't been leaked or anything online. But it's being speculated that it may or may not be a prequel to the Riddick series. Um, but all we do know is it might dive back into a little bit of Riddick's past about the Furians, which is the ra the warrior race on what um, John Riddick is from. Next movie I want to give a little bit mention is Mortal Kombat coming out in January 20... yeah, the 15th of January 2021. We've got the full-blown cast list. I do not want to pronounce any of those names because the names are too difficult because my Japanese is not that great. Uh, this will, I believe, um, be an adaptation of all the main storyline games. So, mostly from what I've seen on IMDb, which I'll, I'll put a link in the description down below to the IMDb page so you guys can check that out. Uh, we're going to have all the classic characters coming in, Liu Kang, Kano, Raiden, Scorpion, Sub-Zero, Shang Tsung, all the good shit coming through. There hasn't been a trailer, but we've got an awesome poster. It's nice, simple, clean design, but they did say that they are going to add fatalities into the, into the movie, and it's going to be an R-rated movie, which is going to be a big deal for Mortal Kombat fans right now. Because the Mortal Kombat movie we got this year, Scorpion's Revenge, is actually really good. I was very excited for it when I saw the trailer for that. But, yeah, right now, that's all I can say about stuff that's coming out very soon. Hope you guys somewhat enjoy my video. Um, I'll see you guys in the next one.